what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Ill-Mented Reviews. I am your host, Mood616. And thank you once again for stopping in, guys. All right, so for episode nine here, as you can see, it's a little bit different setup. So we're going to try something new today for uh, this box set. Um, we're going to do a little bit of a POV style, uh, considering there's four films in this box set that I want to cover. <clears throat> and I just figured that this would be a little bit easier to do. So, all right, so let's get right into it. All right, so box set from Arrow Video called Twisting the Knife, Four Films by Claude Chabal. Um, I won't lie, I actually didn't really know much about this director at all. I had to do a little bit of research on him um, to only find out that this is actually kind of an intriguing box set because uh, the first film that is from 1997 that's in this set uh, called The Swindle is actually his 50th feature-length movie. 50th, that's right, 5-0. So I thought it was very interesting. These films are actually all in sequence. They're uh, from 1997 to 2003. So his 50th to his 53rd films in his career. I just thought that was such an intriguing way to get introduced to a, um, a director. So prolific, but so late in his career at the same time. Um, that's right, Claude Chabal is a French director. And he's mostly known for doing like uh, crime thriller type films in the vein of um, uh, Alfred Hitchcock. Um, Alfred Hitchcock for sure um, from what I've seen so far from him especially with these four movies so all right so um, yeah so here's the box as you guys can see now if you guys are familiar with uh, with Arrow Academy um, Arrow Academy actually basically got dis dissolved by Arrow Video and uh, they started to just kind of put everything that they had on Arrow Academy into Arrow Video now if Arrow Academy was still around, this is probably a box that you, that you would have saw through them. But, uh, you know, through just confusion, basically, with Arrow and, and uh, Arrow Video and Arrow Academy, um, not really knowing where to place the films, whether to release them on Arrow Video or Arrow Academy, they just decided to get rid of Arrow Academy and just release everything under Arrow Video. Um, but yeah, this is one of the titles that definitely would have been released under Arrow Academy for sure. Um, here's the back here. So very, very nice presentation as usual from Arrow Video. So you never go wrong. Here's the four films, limited contents. Uh, I've got Disc One, The Swindle, The Color of Lies, Nightcap, and The Flower of Evil. So that is what your box set looks like. Let's, uh, let's get right into these movies. All right, so getting into the first film here from 1997, and it is called The Swindle. All right, so of course directed by Claude Chabal, um, starring... Uh, the very, very beautiful Isabel Huppé is how you pronounce her name. I'm really, really bad with pronouncing uh, French uh, names. It's just the accents and the way they're pronounced. I just, I can never really do it. So, um, but also starring a guy named Michel Servé, Serval, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, anyways, it's Victor and Betty right here, Victor and Betty. Um, so basically they pay, they play a couple of like small town, small time swindlers, crooks. Uh, they go around traveling the countries, I should, yeah, countries, basically swindling people out of their money is what they do is they, you know, they, they do everything from having Betty seduce, uh, people in casinos and then, you know, kind of knocking them out and stealing, uh, their money. Um, but they're kind of crooks with conscience. They don't rob them completely blind. They actually leave them with money and stuff to make it kind of look like they weren't completely swindled. It's kind of an interesting premise. Um, what's really interesting about um, the storyline too is that they, you know, they play potentially a like love interest couple, but they actually don't. Uh, that's one thing I like about this movie is that they they're strictly business, um, and I really enjoy that about the movie. But basically, what what happens in this film is. Um, you know, there's they're they're crooks, and uh, Victor's got this plan to go to this uh, this retreat in Switzerland. It's a dentist retreat, and he, potentially lots of uh, victims there for him. Uh, but she's actually got a plan of her own. She'd met this guy previously, and uh, she had a plan of her own to kind of swindle um, some money out of him. So the whole kind of plan changes when they get to Switzerland and stuff like that. Uh, unbeknownst to their, you know, to their, um, you know what was really going on is that this guy had plans of his own that they were trying to swindle. And one thing leads to another and they get a little bit too involved and too deep into the situation and kind of over their head, uh, which uh, leads to some bad shit. <laughs> so that's basically what the premise of the film is. Um, so my thoughts on the swindle, 
Uh, it's a very interesting film. Uh, one thing I learned from watching, you know, four Claude Chabal films is that he has this way of having the same tone throughout a, an entire film. It's very interesting how he manages to do that. I will say, first off, the acting in the film is fantastic. Uh, really, really good. It's shot really well. Um, it's very, very beautiful. Um, you know, with these crime these, you know, these crime thrillers, you kind of always have to separate yourself a little bit within the narrative from reality, because there's always certain things that happen in these crime thrillers that you're like, well, if the person had done this, the whole thing wouldn't have worked or this would would have worked or, you know, things like that. And it's it's no it's no different here. I think that the whole movie is really good. Um, I really like the interactions between these two characters. Like, I really like how they kept it very kind of work related. They never falter from the from their characters of who they are. And, you know, try to get involved with each other and stuff like that. It's very much business. The interactions are fantastic with other characters, too. Um, so I looked on IMDb when I first popped in this film to see, you know, just kind of read a little quick little synopsis on it. And it says that it's actually a comedy, a comedy crime thriller. Now, I would definitely classify this movie as a crime thriller with a little bit of comedic elements thrown in. It's not overly funny whatsoever, but it does have some moments of kind of chuckles and stuff. There's a great scene with Victor. Uh, when they get to the Swiss Alps, they're in this bar and, or no, actually what he, right when he's checking into the, the Swiss Alps at the hotel, there's this Italian lady with uh, this dog and she's all over him, like completely all over him. And then he has to try and hide from her later. It's actually quite comical. Um, but yeah, really, really good stuff. Um, I think where the movie kind of falters itself is, is in the third act. And I find that a lot with these crime thrillers is that certain things are happening and you're like, okay, that might work. But then when the reveals happen, you're like, okay, I, I really don't understand why that would actually play out like that and stuff. It's not overly bad. Like I said off the top of the show or top of this episode that, um, you know, he, he makes these films very much in the vein of uh, Alfred Hitchcock. Not as good. Uh, definitely different. Um, I will say, like, it's very interesting not to really have, like, a bona fide third act. Like, things are happening. You know it's going to be the third act. But like the mood and the tone never really changes <clears throat> in this movie. It's, it's absolutely incredible. I've never really seen anything like that when you're dealing with a crime thriller, like you think things are going to get really crazy, but you know, it, it kind of doesn't, but uh, um, you know, overall, man, it, it's uh it's a decent watch. It kept me intrigued through the whole thing. I was very much liking the characters themselves. That's what really kind of sells this film. Victor's an interesting character. She's an interesting character. They have these character traits that are very likable. Um, and, uh, you know, you're rooting for them, even though they're, they're bad, they're technically bad people, they're ripping off people, but you're kind of rooting for them and stuff, uh, which is kind of interesting in itself. You know, a lot of these type of films are like, ah, whatever, but they're so likable that it's hard not to kind of root for them. Um, it's not a very violent film. There's really no action. Like I said, it's very kind of low key. It's more narrative driven. Uh, with the characters and, and the and the uh, the concept of them swindling and stuff, the there is a very interesting scene on an airplane in this film, and that kind of leads into the third act and where the twists and turns happen and stuff with uh, with this big wad of money and stuff. I don't want to give everything away because it's definitely worth a watch, but um, you know it's uh, it's a decent film. If I had to rate this one, I'm going to come in at about a seven out of ten. The only thing I noticed, one thing I did notice with all of Claude Chabal's films is that. Um, they're very they're very quiet films. It doesn't have overpowering scores or anything. Uh, the very the characters are very much kind of uh, they're very developed, which is kind of cool to a certain degree. Um, and also, like one thing that was kind of a little bit off putting is the transitions in a lot of these movies is that they they tend to fade out really fast and fade in. They're, they're just awkward transitions. I don't know if that's done on purpose because it is something that's prevalent throughout all these movies. Um, but it's just, it was just weird to me when you're watching it, but you know, anyways, uh, so here's the, uh, the special features on the disc. If you guys are interested in this, uh, I do highly recommend this though. I actually recommend this, uh, entire box set so far. Uh, none of the films like blew my shitter out, but none of them were, um, awful either. Uh, they're all definitely worth the watches. So if you guys like French films, um, definitely give, uh, you know, this one a watch. So. All right, so that is The Swindle from 1997. All right, next up is a film from 1999, and it's called The Color of Lies. All right, so this one right here um, is kind of an interesting... Uh, it's an interesting character study. I mean, it's a it's another um, kind of crime thriller, drama crime thriller, I guess. It's um, a police investigative type film. Um 
basically what we have here is uh, our main character, Renee. He's um, he's a art teacher. Uh, he's a, you know, a painter slash an art teacher. He makes his ends by, you know, t- giving lessons to children and stuff like that. Uh, he was a painter. Um, his backstory is that he was injured in um, the Par- in a Paris bombing years prior. So it kind of meant it mentally fucked him up a lot. Um, so he's uh, he's he walks with a limp and he's mentally scarred from that situation and stuff. And it, and it put a very much a um, it put a hurt on his relationship with his wife, Vivian. Also, um, he struggles with the relationship and stuff. But anyways, uh, the, the film opens up actually with a little girl being found dead. And the last place she was was at Renee's house uh, getting art lessons. So, of course, the police investigation starts and he's the prime suspect because he was either the second to last person to see her alive or the last person. Right. So, of course, he becomes the main focus of the investigation while other people are kind of taking heart to that investigation and people stop sending their kids for lessons and it starts dwelling on his relationship um, or his mental status even more. And of course, his relationship with Vivian starts to get um, even deeper um, in, into darker places and stuff. Uh, meanwhile, this uh, this kind of like semi-famous journalist comes to the small town uh, in his vacation home. He's doing some work and things like that. And uh, what things get a little bit complicated when he steps into their life. And uh, I'll just kind of leave it at that. So my thoughts on The Color of Lies. Um it's honestly a really, really good film. It's a very, it's a very dark, um, character study of a person that is very, very damaged and having to deal with something that he may or may have not done. Um, you know, it's a great, it's a great way of looking at someone that's been through a tragedy and then keeps having to go through these things and and is trying to make a living like an honest living and trying to, you know, salvage a relationship with his wife. There's just a lot of things that are happening. These characters are very well developed. I really enjoyed this. Um, you know, the score is super somber. The, the cinematography in this is fantastic. It's shot like on the coast of, um, in France and stuff like that. It's just really, really fantastic locations and stuff. But, you know, the investigation is, is really good. You know, there's this cop that, basically she's kind of a new investigator or just kind of trying to make her, you know, make a name for herself. So she's kind of a hard ass and things like that. But I think the way the investigation goes in this is pretty good. I think there's a little bit of missteps in the, in the narrative kind of with it. Um, but overall, man, I think they do a pretty good job of kind of drawing out the mystery of did Renee do this or not? And if he didn't, then who actually did kind of thing. Um, until the third act, I think it gets a little bit clumsy with a reveal and how that reveal comes about, um, it, it seems a little bit convenient. It seems a little bit quick. Uh, Hitchcock would have probably done it a lot better. But um, yeah, there's some really good scenes in this film. I think there's a really great scene where Renee is taking um, the journalist back to his house via boat because they'd had too much to drink and he didn't want him to drive and stuff. It's this really great scene of them uh, rowing or not rowing, but you know, taking this little aluminum boat through the, through the water and it's very foggy and shit and it's very eerie and shit like that. It's very well done. Um, again, with the construction of the film, it's very much like the swindle, uh, and the tone again, you know, it's very somber right from the beginning. It plays that tone from point A to B straight through the film. It's actually incredible how they managed to do that without creating, like, you know, the third act is there, but it's not, like very, very, it's not heavy into the third act. You know what I mean? It kind of keeps the same kind of tone and then it just wraps itself up. It's very interesting um, how Claude Chabal just manages to not like go. He, he doesn't, he doesn't peak that third act. It's very strange. I mean, it's probably not going to be for everybody. Uh, again, the narrative held my interest a lot in this movie. It's very intriguing um, to watch someone suffering and then having to go through something. If he didn't do it, it's very uh, it's mentally collapsing, um, you know, but yeah, there's a lot, of, there's a lot of in-depth things here that are going on psychologically and mentally and stuff. It deals with mental illness. It deals with a lot of things, it deals with relationships with your, with your, um, you know, your wives and, and, um, partners and things like that on both ends. Um, there's some deceitful things that are happening 
And uh, I think this one was really good. Very, very beautiful film. I, I absolutely love movie. Like the, the location of this, like I said before, is fantastic. It's so beautiful. I like I'm watching this film just thinking to myself going, I would love to live right there. It's just fantastic because I love the water. But um, but the color of lies overall is a really good movie. Um, like I said, I think it falters itself a little bit uh, in the third act with um, just the way it's kind of revealed. I think it probably could have been done a little bit more solid. Um, but overall, good film. I'm going to come in at uh, 7.5 out of 10 on this one. I'm going to come up from the swindle just a tiny bit. Again, another really solid watch. Very dark and somber. Uh, it's definitely kind of a mood movie for me at least anyways. Um, you know, again, there's a lot of dialogue in these movies because uh, they're crime thrillers. There's not a lot of action. Um you know, there's not a lot of exploitive angles to these movies and things like that. They're very much straight edge kind of crime thrillers. Um, you know, you get to see a little bit of the end violence in these movies. That's one thing that Claude Chabal does not focus on is on screen stuff very much. It's more implied to the point. So here's your special features. Um, if you guys are interested, you want to read the, the breakdown of it all. Um, but yeah, The Color Lies from 1999, uh, definitely another decent film from the French director, Claude Chabal. Check it out. All right, next up here is a film from 2000, and it's called Nightcap. Um, this one right here is pretty interesting. It's also starring Isabelle Huppé, who is in The Swindle as one of the, the small crooks. Um, also starring Anna Mogalis. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce her name, but I recognized her. As soon as she came on screen, I was like, I recognize her. Where do I know her from? And she's from the movie Kiss of the Damned from the 2000s. And she just has one of the most unforgettable faces. She's so damn beautiful. She's amazingly beautiful. Like, ugh, it's just such an on-screen print. Um, it's just it's so prevalent on screen. Um, so Nightcap, the synopsis of Nightcap basically uh, follows our main character, um, Janine here, who finds out something. She's out for lunch with her mother and her boyfriend and his uh, and his mother. And basically her boyfriend's mother tells her that, um, that something had happened when she was actually born. And uh, her mom, to her dismay of her, you know, her boyfriend's mom saying anything, she goes on and tells her um, Janine this story about when she was born, she was actually mistaken for um, someone else's kid. And that was a famous pianist. And uh, so she actually knows who this this famous pianist is. And um, so she now she really wants to like meet him because what had happened was, I guess the hospital had ran out of tags and stuff like that. And when he had his baby, they the hospital showed her to him. And I guess he had kissed her and things like that. And then realized, oops, wrong baby. I had a boy. <laughs> so this famous pianist actually had a boy and she was the girl. And anyway, she grew up. And not knowing this story, but that she was very intrigued because she, her herself is an aspiring pianist. So she wanted to go meet this guy, you know, and uh, just to kind of more or less out of curiosity, you know, she would just really wanted to meet him. Like I was your daughter for like two minutes, you know, kind of thing. Or I was your kid. Um, so anyways, she reveals to him that she's a pianist and he just kind of takes it upon himself and agrees to, um, kind of train her and help her out because she's got a competition coming up and they spark up this relationship and things like that. Um, and, uh, yeah, so there is, there's a lot of characters. Um, there's a lot of backstory to these characters and things like that. So Isabel, um, who she is, uh, the famous pianist wife. And, uh, she kind of became the, the new wife after his original wife actually passed away. Um, and so he's got a, a son by the same age as, uh, as Janine and there's kind of, um, there's a little bit of hostility there. She doesn't really like the fact that Janine is in their life and things like that. And, um, uh, he doesn't really seem to mind at all because, you know, he really just wants to help her out, but there's, there's a little bit of, um, tension going on with her character and stuff like that. And there's also some things in the past that are not exactly 100% kosher. So if that sounded a little bit confusing, it's not. It's actually very, very simple. But um, anyways, my thoughts on Nightcap. This is a beautiful film. Uh, 
I was watching this movie going, holy shit, I can relate so much to Janine's character right now. And I don't and I can't go too deep into it. I'm trying to say things without giving everything away. Um, but needless to say, there's things that are revealed about her family um, that hit me so hard in this film because I was like 100% could relate to everything that she was going through. I was like, holy shit, I was so intrigued in the storyline in this film. And what exactly what what the mystery was with um with her uh, with the stepmom's character with Hupe's character um, because she definitely plays a huge factor into what happened in the past and what was happening to Janine's character and um, potentially the son also so very very interesting dark dark core narrative here. Uh, without playing it super dark, you know, like you could probably make this this type of storyline into a horror film, uh, but he he doesn't. Man, Claude Chabal manages to keep this this very minoristic tone through the whole film. It's very dark. It's very intriguing. You're like, where is this going? Um, was she responsible for these horrendous acts? Is she doing this to other people? Like, there's a lot of things that you're questioning, but it manages to keep this tone where it's just like. It's so straight lined and that's actually the one thing about this movie that I wish they had of um, embellished a little bit more was the third act. Uh, it, it just seems like it just kind of ends and there's a reaction by the father here, the famous pianist that I feel like would not be acceptable to anybody witnessing that. You'd just be like, what are you talking about? Like that doesn't make any sense to why you'd react to something so horrendous and so depraved, you know? Um I know I'm beating around the bush because I don't want to give it away. I really want people to check these out. This is a really good crime thriller. It's acted well. It's shot well. Again, the only thing I have a problem with is just the transitions from scene to scene sometimes. It almost feels at times it was a TV film the way it fades out so quick and fades in. If you guys are familiar with TV films and you watch them on media, a lot of times they have to quickly fade them out because of commercials and stuff like that. It kind of feels like that at times with Nightcap. Um, but man, dude, th this, uh, this one has got a really... It's not going to connect with everybody if you've never been through what Janine has gone through in this um, and where some of the characters have gone through where I actually physically have actually gone through this. I live this. This movie is like my life. Um, it's kind of crazy. Um, but Anne uh, Mokalis, I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm sorry. I'm just butchering the shit out of her name. She's so damn beautiful. I don't even know why they don't even have her on the art or anything. Um, oh, no. There she is right there. So that's cool. Um I don't think I showed the disc on the other one. It doesn't really matter. It's pretty low key stuff. But uh, but yeah, Nightcap, man, this is a really good film. Um, I just wish, like I said, the third act was a little bit more um, intense. It, it's kind of downplayed for what the content is going to be. Um, but I really like it, though, man. Like the the piano sections in this are done very, very well. Um, the acting is superb in this film. It really is good from everybody. You learn so much about everybody and just it's just like a heartbreaking film. It really is. And it goes to show that, you know, wearing a mask, sometimes like a physical mask is less scary than, than your real face. And that's what I'll say about that because there's a lot of people walking around that look so normal, act normal, have really good professions and jobs. And you would never think twice about them that are the most brutal and mean and depraved people on this earth. And that's kind of what this movie is really displaying. It's very much despicable people that are walking amongst the goodness of reality. And um, yeah, it, it's really good, man. I really enjoyed this film. Um, it's got a great, it's got a great score too. Um, but again, it's another film in the same vein of his other ones. It's very much like he has this formula. I don't know if all of his earlier films are like this too. But definitely the films from this era, from 97 to 2003, it has this it has this structure to them. And it's very much the exact same. So, um, Which isn't a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. It's not a great, great thing because the third acts seem to be kind of the falters in all these movies a little bit. This one is a little bit better, but there's still moments in it where I'm like, oh. But great film. I'm coming out at an 8 out of 10 on this one. I actually did notice when I grabbed this out that it says, uh, film John Waters called Cinematic Perfection in this unsettling tale of suppressed family secrets. And that's exactly what I was talking about. Like family issues, man, I don't want to give too much away. Um, and I probably haven't because a lot of people, I've never actually disclosed my personal family history. So, um, to anybody, but, uh, yeah, this one right here hit me hard. 
it gut punched me, man. I was like, holy shit. Um, but yeah, Nightcap, eight and a half out of ten. I think it's a really good film. Definitely worth the watch. All right, so moving along into the fourth and final film here in Twisting the Knife, the box set, the four films of Claude Chabal, is The Flower of Evil from 2003. And I do have to apologize. I think I said The Swindle was his 50th film. This is actually his 50th film. So The Swindle, I guess, would be his 47th film. Either or, it's still an interesting time in um, a director's career to to showcase in a box set, um, especially for somebody like me that was not familiar with his work before to watch these kind of later films in his career. But but uh, anyways, I digress. The Flower of Evil, a uh, quick little synopsis basically is about... Um, it's about this like very kind of high class family um, and uh, the, the matriarch of the family is running for um, political position as mayor of the city. Um, in the beginning of the film, her stepson, Francois, has just made his way back from America, specifically Chicago. He's been there for four years. He left on interesting terms. He left to go there because he just wasn't really happy with his family situation and stuff like that. Anyways, as he comes back, he sparks up a relationship with his with his stepsister. Um, and, uh, which we get introduced to the family history very quick as the parents are actually cousins, which makes the son and daughter cousins slash sisters or, or, or brother and sister siblings, uh, which is kind of odd. So it kind of plays into this whole incest inbred type thing. Um, anyways, so as the mother is, um, you know, preparing for her campaign and stuff, they receive a letter an anon- an anonymous letter in the mail uh, basically exposing all the family history and secrets and skeletons out the closet, which kind of makes its way out into the public, which is very much a political thing to do from probably an opposing party and stuff like that. She kind of blows it off like whatever. Um, it's political garbage bullshit. Um, we'll let all this shit kind of ride through and we'll see what we can do about it. Um, and uh, basically, yeah, that's kind of the setup to the film. So my thoughts on The Flower of Evil. Uh, I will say this has probably got some of the darkest material out of the four films by by Claude Chabal. Um, and it actually has pretty much the first on-screen violence in this film, too. It does something in the beginning of the film that I'm not overly a big fan of, is showing something from the end of the film as one of the first things in the film, like an establishing shot that is actually from the end of the film. I'm not really a big fan of that. Um this one right here is definitely my least favorite of the four films. It's kind of interesting how the movies progressively got better to me until they didn't. Um, I think that this, like I said, is probably the darkest material of the four. Um, it deals with, it actually has got a really good quote. It says, incest, old money, and intergenerational guilt come through in the scalpel in this brooding story of lies, power, and the power of lies. Um, yeah, like it, it's kind of, it's an interesting storyline with this family history because of you know this this aunt here she plays a big part in the backstory and what happens in the end of the film and things like that um you know it deals with nazis and and things like that there's a whole pile of like, pretty crazy skeletons that come out um but the problem is again with with Claude Chabal's films is that he doesn't really build the suspense in any of these movies until in you know uh, for the f- uh, third act it's very odd how everything kind of comes to uh, I I would just say screeching halt comes to an end, but it's just it's seriously on that very even plane throughout the whole movie. Uh, the suspense never builds in any of his movies, and this one right here could have really benefited from some suspense, um, and to where they would do some of the reveals um, with the history and and certain characters and um, you know what they have done in the past and things like that. Again, I don't want to give too much away. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of narrative here. There's a lot of plot and stuff that I don't want to spoil. So um, I do recommend all these movies. I re- even recommend this one, even though it was my least favorite. Um, I don't know. I just wasn't the, the first hour of the movie, maybe 70 minutes. Of the movie is a lot of just kind of just not that interesting dialogue. And it has a lot to do with um, the brother and sister slash cousins relationship. And it's, it's very much out there. It's, it's, there's just overtones of incest. Um, they're not trying to hide it really at all. <laughs> it's just, it's very odd to see. I know my homeboy JP would love this movie based on the incest and stuff like that, but that's a whole different conversation. Um, but like I said, though, it does have some on-screen violence a little bit and stuff. And uh, I just feel like the content here really could have played out very suspenseful uh, come the third act and stuff. It just doesn't. It, it's the same structure. 
in all these movies. Uh, the theme of all these films is very similar. You know, it's basically about family fuckery. It's these character studies of all these messed up characters and uh, all the fuckery and skeletons that comes with it and stuff. Um, he's definitely very much influenced, like I said, by Hitchcock and stuff, but but by family and characters and stuff like that. So I do applaud him for tackling these type of themes and and things multiple times in his films. Like I said, I'm not sure about his older films, if they're like that too, but definitely this uh, run of films all deal with the same type of subject matter, just in different ways and stuff like that. Um, the Flower of Evil is a decent film. Like I said, I, I found it to be interesting but my least interested of the four if that makes any sense I really liked what was potentially going to happen I just feel like they missed the mark on um exp- not, I don't want to use the word exploiting but you know um you know giving you a little bit more to what is in the narrative if that makes a little bit of sense because there's a lot of there's a lot of dark things that are happening here and you know to be honest I'm not really a big fan of like political type movies um even though this one the the political stuff is I wouldn't say the forefront. It's kind of in the middle. There's a lot more going on. There's a lot of different uh, um, subplots and narratives to this film and stuff like that. But, you know, overall, it's decent. It's shot well. It still has the awkward uh, transitions at times. Um, The acting is great. It's shot great. But it sounds and looks and all these movies are identical. The scores are pretty much the same. They're very quiet. Uh, the themes, the content, it's, it's all very, very similar. So, um, but it's a very, it's a solid box set. If I had to rate this one, this one, I'm coming in about a six out of 10 on this one. Definitely my least favorite. I still do recommend it along with all the other films in the box set. So take a look at the, uh, the features that are on here. If you want to read the quick little breakdown on there. So yeah, all in all, um, very very solid box set i have to say uh i don't know if i mentioned before but yeah these are french films but they are actually subtitled also so um but yeah twisting the knife box set uh quick little look at the booklet here um which is you know just it's got a lot of info on all the films and stuff so my overall thoughts on you know the transfers and stuff like that i think the transfers are all really good on here all the films not only are very similar in content but they all look the same (laughs) uh the the transfers are really good they're very soft looking um i like that kind of plush film look uh it's none of the colors are oversaturated it it, kind of has that kind of washed out old school look like it's funny because the first film in the movie or in this box set is from 1997 but it feels like it's older it's interesting even the one from 2003 um seems like it's a little bit older but i like that you know it's foreign cinema to us it's french cinema and that's just the way it kind of looks but uh yeah definitely a lot of information pictures and stuff in here if you want to um read up on that but um but overall, great box set from from Arrow Video, and uh, that is going to conclude it. That's going to conclude this um, probably very very long uh, review, which I intended it not to be long. That's why I wanted to do it in one video. But I think I just totally overstated my <laughs> overstated my welcome with this with this review. I try to keep them short um, and spoiler free, to be honest. But uh, yeah, twisting the knife, the four films of Claude Chabal. Definitely check it out. Cool box set. All right, guys. And as usual, I'm out of here. Deuces!